fighting to defend the gospel. Gospel, yeah. Fighting to defend the gospel, yeah. yeah. Fighting to defend the Bible, yeah. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so um, of course the topic of uh, discussion will be, does God speak outside of the Bible? Um, I am of the affirming position that he does speak out of the Bible. Uh, and to qualify what I mean that God speaks out of the Bible, uh, he speaks, he can speak through his rhema word or through a preceding word. Uh, that word doesn't contradict the scriptures. It always stands in the parameter of the scriptures. So how does God speak to us? We know through his written word, we all agreed upon that. But he also speaks through dreams and visions. He speaks through the rhema word or preceding word of God by the Holy Spirit. And he also speaks to us during prayer. Dreams and visions. God speaks and gives instructions to man through dreams and visions. We can see this in Job chapter 33, verses 15 and 16. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he open, openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Here we see that God is giving man instruction through dreams and vision. And we know that God is one who does not change. So this continues on uh, in the church age. And we see this uh, at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit prophesied in Joel chapter two, verses 28. And Joel says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And as a result of his spirit being poured out, he says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Here's an example of that. And there's a certain disciple uh, at Damascus named Ananias. Uh, excuse me. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So we see here, after Jesus has been resurrected, after the spirit has been poured out, we see Ananias receiving a vision. And in the vision, he receives instructions for what he has to do, for what the Lord has for him to do. We see also Paul receiving uh, instruction or receiving a uh, a, pro a prophecy of what would happen to him. The rhema word of God. God also uses his rhema word to speak to us. The rhema word is used to give specific, uh, to give a specific word or specific words and instructions to believers as it applies to them individually. The rhema word never contradicts the principles or parameters of the logos. But he answered and said, is it written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And a stranger will they not follow, but they will flee for him, for they know not the voice of strangers. It is the spirit who gives life. The, the flesh profits nothing. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Uh, the Greek word for words in this context is rhema, which is, and, which is the instant and present spoken word. The rhema word flows from the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, Jesus says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. God speaks through the Holy Spirit to teach us his word and give us revelation and illumination. Here's an example of Jesus giving revelation. And he said unto him, these are the words which I spake to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. The same thing that Jesus did for the disciples, the Holy Spirit does for believers. 
But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the followers send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have told you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. We see this example with Paul the Apostle. Paul claimed to receive revelation. He says of the gospel, I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. And a word of prophecy and knowledge is another way God speaks to us. John 16 and 13. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears. And he will declare to you what is to come. 1 Corinthians 14 and 25. But if all prophesy, not just apostles or prophets, if all prophesy, and there come in one that believes not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made, made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report to God is in you a truth. The Holy Spirit also speaks during prayer. In 1 Corinthians 14, 13 through 16, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of your uninformed say amen at what, or excuse me, at your giving thanks since he does not understand what you say? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what's in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf during prayer. And uh, I think, yeah, that is, yeah, I yield my, no, how much do I have time do I have, Tony? You have one minute and 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so what I, my position is that God does speak. Uh, he continues to speak. Uh, this is not just for uh, apostles and prophets, but it's for all who receive his spirit. Uh, his spirit is given to lead us and guide us into all truth. Uh, examples of this uh, could be... Uh, if you need uh, a word of uh, wisdom regarding, let's say, something uh, like a vaccine, like a vaccine that's very controversial today, you can pray and ask God if you should take the vaccine or not, and he will give you revelation uh, according to your situation whether you should take the vaccine or not. That's an example of God speaking to us. We can't read about the coronavirus vaccine and, and, and the scriptures. But the Holy Spirit has sent his spirit. Well, the Holy, we have been given the Holy Spirit to know certain things that are individual and specific to us. And uh, I'll go ahead and yield my time. All right, Tom. <clears throat> All right. All right, cool, cool. Uh, not ready yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. Uh, There's some things that I guess uh, will be said in the cross-examination um, but I'm going to stick with uh, what I already have prepared at the moment. So I'm going to just leave it like this so that way if somebody want to come in, I can see. So um, <clears throat> I'm ready. All right, you ready? All right. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Uh, so does God speak outside of scripture? Uh, I'm on the negative. All right. What is God's word? Okay, when we talk about God speaking outside of scripture, right? First John deals with this topic. <clears throat> In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, right? <clears throat> and then John 1 14 clearly states that the word became flesh, meaning that Jesus is the word, right? So, John 5, 39 through 40, Jesus clearly states that the scriptures bear witness to him. So, everything that's in the Old Testament, prophecy, laws, things of that nature, points to the coming Messiah. 
points to Jesus Christ. Luke also confirms this in uh, Luke 24, 44. When he says that <clears throat> these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that every word written about me in the law of, the, of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So Jesus is telling you straight up that, look, not only am I the, the prophet is going to be fulfill, fulfilling the office of the prophet, but the whole entire Old Testament is about me. So those dreams and things of that nature, that's something that we shouldn't prescribe that God would do to us. But that's pointing to our Messiah. The New Testament, right? Jesus and his high priestly prayer, it says, <clears throat> for I have given the words that, I'm sorry, for I have given them the words that you gave me and they received them and they came from, I'm sorry, and they came to know truth that I come from you. This is his high priestly prayer when Jesus is praying to the father, talking about his disciples, his apostles. So the Old Testament is pointing to Christ. And this is how we know that the New Testament is the word of God because of the apostolic writings of the um, apostles. Long ago, in many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken <clears throat> to us by his son. Mm -hmm. uh, boom. All right. So now if God speaks outside of the Bible, right, and the Bible points us to Christ, then Christ is not our mediator. For there is one God. And there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. You know, Troy said um, that God speaks in prayer. I also want to be mindful of John 15, 7. Jesus says that if my words remain in you, ask whatever you will and it will be given to you. So I am the way, truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father but by me. Christ is our mediator. If if God is speaking to us outside of scripture and scripture points us to Christ, then Christ is not our mediator. If scripture bear witness to Christ and Christ is our mediator, then why would God speak outside of scripture? I kind of see myself. So it's the reason I'm moving like that. If God is speaking outside of the Bible, then Christ's work on the cross is insufficient. Second, second Peter one, three, four. Uh, I'm just going to cover the top part through the time. So his divine power has granted us all things that's pertaining to life and godliness, right? So if there's something that's more important than your own soul salvation, God's going to speak to you and let you know. And that's what Christ done. Long ago and many times and in many ways, God's spoken to us through our fathers, but I'm sorry. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoken to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. The greatest thing we have as Christians is our salvation. The greatest thing a non-Christian can have is salvation. Being made, being made right before a holy God is the most important thing that we could have. If God speaks outside of the Bible, then the Bible itself is insufficient. My opponent, right, holds the Bible as a tool by which we may hear the voice of God. My position is when we read the scripture, we are hearing the voice of God. God does not speak outside of scripture because he's spoken through his son. And, his, and the Bible points us to uh, his son. My opponent position leads to eisegesis, <clears throat> fetalism. It misinterprets and misapplies scripture. It misrepresents the nature of scripture. It denies the sufficiency of scripture. It undermines the authority of scripture. It promotes a false view of Christian maturity. It promotes a Gnostic view of Christian life. If something outside of scripture is used to authenticate scripture, then scripture is not what it says it is. Tom Carpenter, RCC. If private revelation agree with scripture, they are needless. If they disagree with, uh, I'm sorry, if they disagree, disagree, they are false. John Owens. Thanks, uh, Eric King, for letting me know that quote. My truth, when you exegete the scriptures, 
you know truth, you interpret and apply scripture correctly, right? That's what you'll be doing. You represent the true nature of scripture, of Jesus Christ, not man. You recognize the sufficiency of scripture. You understand the authority of scripture. You understand the supremacy of Christ. Hebrews 1, 2, I'm 1 and 2. Uh, I cannot see that quote because my head is right there. Hold on. As, I'm sorry. As one reads the mind and is enlightened, the heart is touched, and there comes convincing discernment of scripture message. Holy little. Boom. <clears throat> How did Jesus view scripture? Jesus said the scripture cannot be broken, right? It cannot be broken. And then he said, I'm going to just paraphrase uh, Matthew uh, 5, 17, that pretty much that everything has to be fulfilled. He held to the scriptures wholly because he knew that God the Father held the scriptures. Uh, strongly as well. Sorry, I had to let somebody in. And he also used the scriptures when dealing with Satan in chap Matthew chapter 4, when he said it is written. He always pointed to what was written. In conclusion, there is no authority greater than God and his word. There are no I'm sorry, there are no modern day prophets and apostles today because of the finished work of Christ. Ephesians 2, 20, 21, Matthew 5, 17, John 17, 8. So there isn't anyone receiving direct revelation from God. If you believe that God speaks outside of the Bible, then Christ's work on the cross is insufficient. All right, let me say this last thing. Finally, scripture alone is the sole infallible source of authority for the Christian faith and practice. Sola Scriptura. Scripture alone is the voice of God. That's my time. Okay, Gabriel. Uh, I enjoyed your, uh, your your discourse. Uh, I do have a couple of questions for you. Absolutely. Uh, my, uh, my first question um how can we figure out what truth is with so many denominations if uh, solo scriptura is all we need? Again, we have many different denominations, many uh, seminaries of different denominations, many doc doctors of theologies, master of theologies and different denominations uh, that have different interpretations of what scripture says. Uh, we know this in eschatology, we know this in even salvation, you know. Uh, how can we discern what truth is? If scripture is all we need and all these denominations claim to come from the scriptures. Well, you know, uh, uh, for the Christian that believes in uh, the doctrine of sola scriptura is basically saying that scripture is the sole infallible source that a Christian have for um, Christian living. So when you sit back and you say that there's different denominations and things of that nature, that doesn't necessarily take away from um, the authority of scripture because it, it regardless, um, there's a universal church and then there's a local church, right? And so those who have put, well, those who have faith in Christ, in Christ alone, right? They're part of the church uh, and they're part of the collective group. So it's not that, okay, if the Bible is all we need, then why is that? It's so many other people, you know, doing this and doing that, but rather, it's we understand that we're sinners in dire need of a savior and that we're saved through grace by faith in Christ alone. Okay, but how, how do we discern what truth is? How do we how, how can we discern yes, this person's right, this person is wrong? From from believers. I'm not talking about sinners, I'm I'm talking about people who believe who have believed on Christ, who know the gospel, have uh, put Christ as the headship and lordship of their life. Uh, their blood has, um, his blood has remitted their sins. Uh, they st there's still disagreements. How do we well, discern yeah. truth? How do we know what truth is? Yeah, there, there are disagreements. Yeah, but there's, there are the main things. And then there are some things that, you know, there are leeway, you know? So if you sit back and you say that, you know, Christ, 
didn't die on the cross and he wasn't resurrected, then, you know, I, I can't call you a brother. It's those core doctrinal things that make you a Christian. Okay. Well, well can you address John 16 and 13? Uh, because you, you just mentioned just the core is only important, but it's John 16 and 13 says, uh, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he, not, he, for he shall not speak of himself, because the Holy Spirit, we know, glorifies Christ. But what, whatsoever shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Uh, it says the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. So, so are we not supposed to believe that we can know all truth or be led into all truth? Or are we just supposed to, uh, is the core just necessary or sufficient? Well, the thing about it is this. Uh, the thing about it is this: when you when you look at uh, that passage, right? <clears throat> you gotta understand: is this prescriptive or is this descriptive? Is this something that we should prescribe to as Christians? Because when you when you look at it, right, it's saying that it's going to lead us to all truth. If we take your stance, right, then Christians, we should all be able to just come up with the cure for cancer and things of that nature, right? What I'm saying is this, through scripture, right, John wrote that. John wrote that passage, and he also wrote John 1 saying that Jesus was the word, meaning that and he also wrote that Jesus said that the scriptures was about him. And then he also wrote that um, he also wrote the uh, high priestly prayer, right? That means that that... Uh, passage is descriptive because John is describing what Jesus was saying. Should that be prescribed to us? No, because here it is. John, how is John able to write the uh, high priestly prayer and be asleep? The Holy Spirit gave him that, right? But is that something that we should subscribe to? People who because I'm not an apostle. I don't believe in modern day apostles, but there were certain gifts that the apostles had. Okay. Um, I disagree with you, uh, but I will go to my second question. Um, it says, um, my second question, why wouldn't the Holy Spirit speak to us to avoid last day deception if the Holy Spirit spoke to the apostles at the inception of the church? and the prophets and evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why not? Well, the, why would the Holy Spirit cease from speaking in, uh, in a day where it's last day deception, where Jesus warns us, be not deceived? When the Holy, wouldn't you think that the Holy Spirit would still speak to us even more so even now in this last day? Yeah, uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. It's speaking to us uh, via the scriptures. You know, you sit back and you read scripture, um, it will tell you to be watchful of false teachers so that way and you can only get that through scripture so the, the spirit the inspiration of scripture is still speaking to us today but it's speaking uh to us via the scripture it's not speaking to us via an audible voice it's not speaking to us uh, through uh, um i guess a prophetic word it's only speaking to us from scripture the the the, the writings of the prophets of the old testament in the writings of the apostles of the New Testament, that's how it's speaking to us, and that we can be able to discern what is false and what is not. <clears throat> how do we do that? Do we do that from our own? How we how do we discern what's true and what's false? Do we do that from our own intellect, or do we need uh, illumination or revelation from the Holy Spirit? Well, there's no uh, well the, the revelation of Scripture is, is all we need. Now, how do we get that revelation? Spirit. How do we get that revelation? That, that that openness of our understanding as Jesus did with the apostles because they knew the scriptures but they didn't know uh, what the uh, what the crucifixion and resurrection meant until Jesus opened their understanding of the scriptures so how do yeah. we so how do we get yeah. that because there's so many people who read the Bible but yet don't understand what they're reading how do we understand what we're reading how do we understand what we're reading yeah. so, so, so so okay okay so you're asking how do we understand what we're reading because of the Holy Spirit? That was that. Is that what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah. How how do we understand it? Because so many people read the Bible, yet they come up with different doctrines. 
How do we discern what truth is, what the truth of the scriptures are saying? So wait a minute, you're saying, how do we know what truth is from yeah, what the scripture is saying? For, 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 for example, uh, if you want to talk about uh, the Godhead, Trinity, or, you know, one is Pentecostals believe that there's only one person in the Godhead, or if you wanted to go into eschatology, the rapture of Jesus is coming pre-trib or post-trib, uh, how, how do we know what the truth is? So you're basically saying, how do we know that there is that one just truth, like from the Bible? Like we re reading the Bible, and if it's if it's sufficient, that we should just read it and it's, everybody get it. Is that what you're saying? It, it's okay. I'll, I'll move on to my life. How much time we have, uh, Tony? A minute and 30 seconds. I'll move on to my last question. We can discuss it in, in, uh, later. Uh, my third question. What other scriptural witness do you have that the gifts cease with the completion of the canon? Uh, I know I mean, one you may have brung up, but what, what other scriptures do you have? Because out of the mouth of two and three witnesses, the word says, let every word be established. So what, have, what other witness do you have that the uh, gifts cease with the completion of the canon? So, you, so you're saying basically, uh, other than the scripture that I gave that Jesus uh, prayed on the high priestly prayer that uh, he gave his words to the apostle, what other scripture do I have to, yes. I guess, validate the uh, uh, New Testament? Yes, the, 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 to say that the gifts cease with the completion of the canon. Well, um, Paul said that there will be some gifts that will cease uh, as far as, I know he said tongues will, it's in um, Corinthians uh but you said for the, the you said what, what ceased again now? That the, the gifts ceased, the supernatural gifts, you know, or just for this for the sake of the topic, just uh word of knowledge, word of prophecy, word of word wisdom. Of word of prophecy. You know what? I look up, I look that up and I'll uh I get back with you. Okay. I admit that, yeah. Okay, um, um and who does the Holy Spirit hear from? That's a, that's another question. Who does the Holy again? Spirit who does the Holy Spirit hear from? Time. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that after. Okay. Yeah. You can um. You can um shoot me that question. I I see what I can do. I mean, I I I if I don't know, I don't know, or whatever. I try my best. You know, just out of respect. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You ready? Yep. Right now. All right, Troy. So uh, according to uh, <clears throat> Colossians two eighteen. All right. Mm hmm. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human traditions, according to the elemental spirits, and not according to Christ. So how do you distinguish if you've heard the word from God versus yourself? Okay, uh, you, you distinguish that. You distinguish the voice of God. You have to establish that. First of all, you have to establish God's voice during prayer and fasting. Uh, if I can find a scripture for you. If you go to Acts 13 and chapter 2, I mean, Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, we see an example of this. And um, you want me to go ahead and just read it? No, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, just, you know. Yeah, Acts 13 and 2, it says, um, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, uh, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So we see that the voice of God comes uh, where uh, in an atmosphere where he's being exalted, right? Uh, he says, if two or three be gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst. Uh, who, uh, scripture also says, uh, Who whosoever dwelleth in his secret place shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So we know that Jesus, uh, we know that the Holy Spirit is with us when we're uh, in a place of exalting him, praying to him, and he does speak. How do we ex distinguish the voice of the Holy Spirit? from our own selves, uh, that comes from, again, your prayer life, and that comes from uh, recognizing voices of strangers, right? Can, so can I ask you, so, all right, so John 15, 7 says that it, um, what is it? he said, if you hold to my teachings and you hold, uh, if you remain to me, my words remain to you, yeah. ask whatever you will, and it'll be given you. So you're saying that it was via prayer, but isn't that basically praying the scriptures uh, to God, because yeah. see, 
what I'm trying to say is like, okay, how do you distinguish from like a dream or something happening to you if the scriptures point to Christ? Like they, how how what like how do you distinguish that? Yeah, whatever you hear has to align with the logos. Whatever you hear has to align with the word of God. Just like with uh, Jesus when he was in the desert, Satan came unto him and challenged him and said, doesn't the word of God say this? And then, like you said, Jesus responded with the word, right? You have to know the word of God. And so if that word, whatever word or whatever you hear go, is contradictory to what we read in the scriptures, in the word, then you know it's false. But couldn't that lead to eisegesis as far as, you know, you just putting that situation into the scripture as opposed to uh, exposing it and letting the scripture say what it says? I don't, I don't believe so because we, Satan it still does the same thing that he does that he did to Christ. Satan is still uh, telling us lies. Satan is still using the scriptures to tell us lies. He's twisting the scriptures to tell us lies. How are we to respond? I believe we are to respond like Jesus. Like you said, through the word, through the logos, because yes, he does speak through his word, but he also th speaks through a preceding word, which Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth. That's a continuation. That doesn't, it hasn't stopped. Proceeded. That's a continuation. So he's still speaking today. Okay. All right. So let me ask this question. So uh, second question. Second Timothy, uh, separate, uh, second Timothy 3, 16, 17. All scripture is uh, breathed out by God. The Anustas. And is profitable for teaching and reproof and correction and for the training of righteousness that the man of God may be complete equipped for every work. If scripture is God breathed, why would God need to speak outside of scripture? Okay, when I uh, I want to understand when you say God speaks outside of scripture, do you are you talking meaning that God speaks outside of scripture that He contradicts scripture? No. I want to get an understanding. No, I, I'm saying so when when you say God speaks outside of scripture, it's pretty much saying that there's something else that God can speak to you via other than the bible so, okay yeah i got you i got you again uh the voice of god never contradicts his word but the voice of god does give you instruction uh specific instructions to your specific situation we know that there of course uh, like you brought up second timothy 3 16 and 17 that all scriptures breathe out of god and is profitable for teaching uh but the word of god is not the only thing there's word and then there's spirit right and the word in the spirit but, in the hold on hold on but but hold on. It, it says it breathed out so it's scriptures breathe out that means that god had put his spirit into the scriptures yes i agree i agree with that but his spirit is also still speaking now, what, what do we do with jesus well like you because said that, that, now Hebrew, hebrews one hebrews one remember what it says that he spoke into the prophets right but now in these latter times He's spoken to us through Christ. Yes. Now, I, if, if 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 there's other thing that's going on, what do we do with Christ in this situation? That's the reason yeah. why I said what I said. That if if God is still speaking outside of Scripture, then man, like Christ's yeah. work was insufficient. Right. Like and the greatest thing, the, the greatest thing we can have is salvation, yeah. being made right before a holy God. You know, finding a, the the right spouse, a good job, or whatever. Well, God say you'll live in conditions if if you die in your sins apart from a holy God, like what do we do? Yeah, okay. This this is not a, a salvation debate. Um, you only hear from the Holy Spirit. You only hear from the, you only hear from the Holy Spirit if you're a believer, right? And like you said, like you mentioned in your uh introduction. Holy Spirit. Like you mentioned in your uh, introduction, Christ is our high priest. Right. And so that's why I asked you, though, Christ said he's sending us a, a comforter and another advocate, which is the Holy Spirit. And so this is why I asked you, who does the Holy Spirit hear from? Because the Holy Spirit, my position is that the Holy Spirit hears from Christ. So Christ is the center of it all. We get direction specifically from Christ. The Holy Spirit hears from Christ when we pray because the, because Christ is interceding for us on our behalf. Holy Spirit hears from Christ and gives us the instruction or gives us the word. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question. So, uh, all right. So, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, 
for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't your position put God on the same level as every other spirit as far as the process of, all right, God is speaking and that we confirm it? Like, wouldn't that put God on the same level as the other spirits, according to this passage? What do you mean by putting well, God? Okay, okay. So I don't understand the question. All right. So, all right. So it says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Mm -hmm. Many false prophets have gone out into the world, right? Yes. So when you're saying that God speaks outside of scripture and that is not going to contradict the word, right? Yeah. So if God speaks, right, then that means you would have to go to the word to see if it's confirmed from God, right? Yeah, if it, it has to right. agree with so the parameters now, of the word. wouldn't that put God on the same level as other spirits according to this passage? Like, isn't, isn't God supreme? Like, isn't, you know, the word... Is are, you talk, are you asking mm -hmm. in the context of if the word has... I mean, if the word, word that you're hearing has to be tested, like other spirits? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Best, yeah, basically, yeah. Hold on. What, Tony, what were you saying? I'm saying, um, I'm going to stop the time real quick. Troy, let him finish his question, okay? Oh, I'm I'm just trying to... Uh, okay, but go ahead, go ahead, reply, reply, reply. No, go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt. I'm just trying to... No, but no, nah, that, that's, that's, that's yeah. essentially what I, I, I'm, I'm saying. Like, when your position put God on an inferior level compared to what it is that we're supposed to use uh, to govern false teachers. No, because I think... You're saying, you're saying that God speaks and that it's not going to contradict his word, right? And so how would we know that by going to the scriptures? Wouldn't it be just God giving us the word, we're reading it, and that's the voice of God? Again, God can, can speak. He does speak by his logos, right? We can read the word and know that that's the word of God. But the rhema word, yes, he also speaks through his rhema. And you have to know the word of God to know if that's the true word, right? And also, it comes by relationship. You have to establish the voice of God in uh, prayer and fasting, right? When you're in prayer and fasting and exalting Christ, he will speak to you. And once you do that, you, you know the voice. He, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice and the strangers yeah. will not follow, right? All so right. you establish that during prayer. And that's yeah. how you can discern who what is of God and what is not of God, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, for that, that passage is dealing with salvation. So, you know, Jesus is, uh, there's uh, four things, the bread of life, um, you know, a number of things. Each passage is, is pointed to Christ and salvation. So that passage is dealing with Christ being the good shepherd. So and when you keep reading down further down on that passage, he says that he have sheep of other foes, meaning that he's talking about salvation for Jews and Gentiles. I just wanted to say that right there. All My right. next question. Um, this is lengthy. Um, so hey, how, much is, um, how much time I got left? Uh, that's time. That's it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, at the end, if you want to get back to it. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put my uh, PowerPoints in the uh, chat. And if anybody want to look at them, they can look at them. You know, okay. feel free to do the same, uh, Troy. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. All right. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and go into our three minute close. So, uh, Troy, you go ahead because you're affirming. Okay. Give me one sec. I was trying to do the PowerPoint. I mean, I was going to do mine like. Later, <laughs> this conclusion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three minute close, and then we're going to go ahead and uh get into our dialogue for people who want to uh have questions and things of that nature. Okay, sure. Again, um, uh, hold on, uh, Tony. Yep, I started with Tony. When he said, okay, okay, all right, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure. Okay, again, uh, I just want to reaffirm my position that uh. When we uh, believe on Jesus Christ and we receive of his spirit, uh, the helper, the advocate that he said that he would send, uh, the helper and advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, will lead us and guide us into all truth, right? Uh, and uh, the Holy Spirit will also teach us all things. And uh, we have from multiple witnesses that it says, we don't have that any, we, we don't have any need that any man teach us, but the Holy Spirit is our teacher and will reveal all things to us, right? This doesn't happen unless the Holy Spirit speaks to us today, right? Um, there's still a word of prophecy. 
there's still a word of knowledge that you can receive, right? These things happen during, uh, uh, during a process of establishing your relationship with Christ, right? Through prayer and fasting, right? Uh, like you said, all scriptures is given by revelation for God, for, you know, for correction, reproof, uh, rebuke, and, and that scripture that in Timothy that uh, Gabriel had brought out, right? But he's still leading and guiding us today. He's given us many resources for that through his word, the logos, the Bible, and through his Holy Spirit, right? Through dreams and visions from the Holy Spirit. Uh, to discern what's true or not, you have to know the word. You have to know the logos because the spirit and the word agree. And you also have to believe. If you don't believe, then you won't hear, right? Because we are, the just shall live by faith, right? We have to believe these things. If we believe these things, if we have an expectation of these things, then we can experience these things. But if we don't believe, of course, then we won't receive. So I, I just encourage anyone out there who is even questioning this, whether you believe or you don't believe, uh, to try God. Say, hey, God, is what Troy is saying true or false? I mean, if you don't expect to hear, <laughs> he will, he can reveal to uh, you the truth in other ways. But having uh, uh, again, I am reaffirming that believers can hear from the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit does speak today, not only just by the word, the logos, but through the rhema word, through a proceeding word, which does not contradict the logos or the parameters of the logos, and that we need to know both the word and uh, be led of the Holy Spirit, be open for revelation and illumination. And I just want to thank Gabriel uh, for his time and the Red Te uh, Team Apologetics crew and everyone who's tuned in, and I, I yield my time. All right, man. Hey, man, man. I, I told you, man, um, Troy be throwing them spiritual bullets. Have you do the bullet dance? <laughs> Let me stop. Uh, hold on before I get started. Um, All right, are you ready, Gabe? No, nah, not yet. Hold on. Uh, no. Oh, I know. What. Give me a moment. Yeah, it's a little bit much for three minutes, right? <laughs> All right, end the statements. All right, ready? Ready, go. All right. Okay, what I'm not saying is that uh, God doesn't care about his children. You know, Psalms clearly uh, talks about that. I'm not saying that God doesn't answer prayer. I'm not denying God's providence, his cooperation with everything that happens in God and the universe. What I am saying is uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly divide the word true, you know, that when scripture is misinterpreted, right, the voice of the preacher or the person is heard instead of God. My position is when scripture is read and understood God's intended meaning, we hear the voice of God. When the word of God is accurately preached, read, the voice of God is truly heard. What happens if the Bible doesn't speak specifically? If you have an issue with the Bible does not speak specific, it talks about within the guidance of God's word, God's revelation of his moral and will and wisdom, we are free to do what we want with God's blessing. So if you have a situation where you need to know um, about a job, where well, that job isn't selling drugs or doing anything that's contrary to scripture, you can do it. It's a lot of people in the body of Christ that just have grown sterile waiting for mates or they've grown just, they just pass. They let things go by because they're trying to hear this voice from God and he's already spoken in scripture, you know? I'm not saying that, basically what I'm saying is that the Bible is how God communicates to us because he communicated through us through Christ, our mediator. I meant it. 
it is written. That's it, you know? Like, Jesus went back to the word, God the Father went back to the word, and the Holy Spirit goes back to the word, you know? Um, you want to hear the voice of God, read the Bible. If you want to hear the voice of God out loud, read the Bible out loud. Thank you for your time. Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, so yeah, so I guess I'm gonna go back to being host now. How'd you like it, Tony? That <laughs> was cool. Yeah, that I'm. I'm usually, I'm usually the guy. I kind of feel like a dude coming out of retirement. I haven't had a it's, debate. In like it's weird interrupting, interrupting in the middle of y'all talking. I'm like, uh, like I was like, have my hand to the side. I'm like, one minute, like <laughs> trying not to. <laughs> I don't know why I have my hand. At the side nah. of <laughs> so yeah, all right. So um, what what we're gonna do now? We're gonna go ahead and have a um, a, our dialogue uh, for those that's on the line. And typically, what we do at Red Team, if you have something you want to say, you can say something to me. You can say something to Troy. You can say something about the topic. Just uh, I ask that you before you mute your phone because I kind of hear people doing that now. Uh, place in the chat that you have something to say. And we'll give you uh, three to four minutes to just respond and ask a question. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and start now. Um, and I can keep the time, too, um, if you want. Okay, we can both do it. Oh, you got it. You got it. Hey, anybody got questions, <laughs> comments? Oh, yeah, let me drop my stuff. Uh, it kind of sounds like somebody uh, want to say something. I think Ken, Ken brought up um, in the chat, he brought up, um, how are we defining the Holy Spirit? I guess that could be a question for the both of you. How are we defining the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? You want to go first, Troy, or I, I do it? Oh, you can go first. Well, pretty much the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, right? And the Holy Spirit, what it does, it comes to help us in our process of sanctification. So it helps sanctify us. Um, it's the, the process of sanctification, uh, uh, justification, and glorification, I believe. But pretty much the uh, Holy Spirit helps us to grow to be more Christ-like. There you go. Uh, all right, it says uh, the Bible says in Revelation. Right, so, uh, Miss Solomon, uh, did you want to say something? You can go ahead and uh, ask your question. Uh, I believe you might be mute. Okay, you don't know how to, okay. All right. Can you, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, God bless you and God, God bless everybody that's on here. And uh, Pastor Troy is my little brother, so I'm very proud of him and how he taught tonight. But I just wanted to let you know that apostles and prophets still exist because I am a uh, commissioned apostle. Uh, I was once a minister, then a pastor, and I've been commissioned by God as an apostle, and I'm also a prophet, and uh, God has made me a very accurate prophet, So, and I know many other accurate prophets, so they do exist. So in the book of Revelation, God said he's going to pour his spirit out on everybody, old and young, to dream and to prophesy, so that proves that prophets still exist. You know, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And as far as the Trinity... That's the man-made word. 
It's nowhere in the Bible. Okay, it's called the Elohim Godhead because God name, his real name is Yahweh Tesavah Elohim. But many people call him Jehovah. But those of us who are woke know his name is Yahweh Tesavah Elohim. And the Holy Spirit name is the Ruha Kaddish. And Jesus name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahushua. Jesus is what I call him. Now, if you go to Proverbs, I believe it's in Proverbs 30 or 31, it says uh, wisdom is Sophia. If you look up Sophia in the Greek text, Greek text, you will learn Sophia is a female deity. So the Holy Spirit is not a he. She is a she. She is God's counterpart. God told me, do you think I would have a man and a woman on the earth and not have a man and a woman on my throne? Okay. So I want you to go in prayer, and I even prayed while listening to you. I prayed and asked Yeshua Jesus to visit you in your dreams to okay. show you the truth. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah. What- I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cutting you off, but it's like, well, I am because it's like your time is uh up. Uh, oh, anybody okay. want to respond to that? Because yeah. it's four to three minutes. Anybody want to respond? I mean, <laughs> I could respond. To that, um, first of all, I have I've been kind of I'm known as a talker of the group and the educator type of person, but it's been great to be in the other seat tonight of just being a, a observational. And uh, it was a good debate, but I just want to address um, a few things, Mr. Solomon. Um, I don't want to redirect too much attention outside of the debate. Uh, but you, okay, you said a few things. I'm trying to see which thing needs the most attention or how to address you. First of all, I'm glad to meet you and see you um, on here. Um, okay, but I think your initial statement was that there are apostles today. That's yes, yes. And and you're, you're confirming, you are, are affirming yourself to be a, uh, yes, I was commissioned in 2017 by an apostle. The Lord told, well, it was prophesied years ago that I would be his apostle. And he sent an apostle to come and commission, commission me as an apostle October 21st, 2017. And they still do exist and prophets. Because God said we would do greater things than him. So how could we do greater things than him if there was no apostles, prophets, ministers, pastors, deacons, deaconess, and evangelists? How can we do greater things than God if those things don't still exist this day? Apostles are to root up and to tear down. You need apostles to run your, to run the church. You need elders to help run the church. You need the prophets to speak to the church and the nations because they are God's mouthpiece, just like they were in the Bible. God does not change his ways or structures. But what happens is God changes towards you because of how you act toward him. But one okay. thing about his kingdom structures, he don't change those. And nowhere in the Bible does it says that apostles and prophets have been abolished. All right. Go ahead, James. Well, what I just want to understand what context you're using to determine your, your office as apostle. Because if you look at how apostles were chosen mm-hmm. first century they, of the church. They were chosen um, by God himself. Right. They were specifically chosen by Christ himself. Mm-hmm. And so how do you know that you've been chosen to, to be an apostle in the same manner of those that were chosen in the first century? Well, I know because God told me himself because I am a prophet and I can hear from him. And he has sent many people as prophets and apostles beforehand to also confirm that he has given me the office of uh, of an uh, apostle. So okay, okay. So my, my follow my, my follow up question to that is: How did the people that you're calling prophet or apostle? How are they affirming your position? I'm just trying to understand if they, they affirm my position. They affirm my position through the Almighty God Himself, mm-hmm. because only God can birth a prophet. You cannot make a prophet. Only God could birth a prophet. You cannot make an apostle. Only God can birth one. And he birthed me in my mother's womb as a prophet, as an apostle, long ago. Yeah. <laughs> and 
I, I guess I guess what I guess what uh, uh James is saying, like how how do you know what you know? Because is, God, is that what you're trying to say, James? Okay, yeah. I know okay. Just... I know what I know for one by the word of God, and for another what, what, God what? spoke to me himself and told me I was his apostle and prophet, and he has told multitude of prophets and apostles out there over but, the past. But that goes years. back, that goes back to what uh the topic is. Like, how do you know? Like, because I'm assuming what James is going at is the fact uh -huh. that when you look at the uh, apostles, they uh -huh. were First of all, all men. And no, uh, Jesus said 70 other apostles. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Then, no, was an he, apostle selected, he selected the men. Yeah, but he James, selected what, what else were you what were you gonna say? Right. Well, you know, again, I don't want to take too much time away. I think that this can end up can I just say can I just say one thing? This is not gonna end up in, in an argument or getting mad or no, 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 it's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. A religious spirit, but I just want to tell you, I I went to Liberty University and I went to a, another Bible school called Ames Bible College, and I have degree in uh, biblical studies. Right, so when I went to Liberty, I learned that Yeshua Jesus had women apostles as well, and Mary Magdalene was his first apostle, and she was once a prostitute until she came to God and uh, repented and he restored her life. And she was an apostle as well. God yeah. had many women apostles, just like he did men. And I'm gonna tell okay. you- Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, let's- one more thing. Hey, who, oh, anybody else got anything they wanna add? I'll, I'll say I'll say something. All, all right. right, Troy, you got another four minutes? Uh, just, just to answer, the, answer James question, like how do you know? How do you know that it's the voice of God that you're hearing? Again, like I was telling Gabriel, that voice is established in prayer, right? It's a, yeah. sometimes yeah. it's a still small voice, right? And it's mm -hmm. a voice. It's it's not just a random voice that you hear, right? Mm -hmm. It sometimes it's, it comes from your spirit, right? It comes from the spirit man, and it's, and it's when you're quiet, when you're quiet, when your spirit is quiet, when your inner self is quiet, you don't have random thoughts, fears, insecurities. Uh, uh, the voice of the enemy running through your head, through your mind, then God can speak. Right. The Holy Spirit in you can speak. It comes from within your spirit. Right. And that right. comes okay. through, again, that comes through prayer and fasting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, and, and, hold on, hold on. Angie, Angie, uh, Angie. Okay, so I, if, let me get my thoughts together. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> so if, if, if people are saying that God can speak to you directly, right? We have this relationship with with, mm -hmm. with, with the Lord. And mm -hmm. when Jesus died on the cross, you know, that veil ripped. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking those that believe in and those that are modern day prophets. Mm -hmm. If I personally have a relationship with God mm -hmm. and this quote unquote, and I'm putting quotes for a reason, this quote unquote prophet is saying that they have a relationship with God too, but he's mm -hmm. giving me a word from God, right? Mm -hmm. But why if God can if if God can talk to me directly, what is the purpose of having those nowadays prophets if God, and this is I guess going to the people that affirm it, uh, if God can speak to me directly. Okay, like the Bible says everybody is not called to be a prophet. You must be born a prophet. You can't just go to a prophecy school to become a prophet. The Bible also says that we all have the ability to prophesy. And what that means is you have the ability to decree and declare a thing. And if you believe it shall come to pass, like it says in the Bible. But the Bible also lets you know that everybody's not called to be a prophet. But in the end day, like it says in Revelations, God's going to pour his spirit out on everybody, old and young, to speak and see dreams. So we are in the end days now, and God is doing that. You have children prophesying. You have children laying hands and casting out demons. You have children preaching at five years old. So you can see that God's uh, spirit is just all over the place, right? So everybody's not meant to be a prophet, and everybody's not meant to hear God audibly. God, it says many are called, but few are chosen. So the ones that are chosen to be a prophet or an apostle or a seer or a revelatory prophet or an audible prophet, those are the ones that God not just called, <laughs> but he chose them. So everybody's not meant to hear God. So sometimes you could be going through something really bad in your life. You could be ready to kill yourself, all right, right? All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to go ahead and let um uh, Ken, you had a comment. Just 
I just gotta let people, you know, get these comments. They they stacking okay. up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. I'm sorry. I kind of came on the conversation a little bit late, and uh, I really have quite a few comments. But I'll, I just mentioned um, just something with regards to the statement about apostle. I think one we need to keep when we say we're this, we're that, and the other. We need to keep it in the context of what the Bible says. Um, that's first of all. Secondly, the Bible clearly gives the qualification for an apostle. And one of those qualifications was they had to have been with the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, and I have to. Secondly, right, hold on, hold on. Respect, respect them. Go ahead. Okay. Secondly, okay. they would have had to have seen the risen Lord Jesus. And I have. I they, All right, hold I on, hold on. Let, let them talk. Let them talk. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so they would have to have been with the Lord. They would have to have seen the risen Lord Jesus. Thirdly, they would have to have been appointed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And there, is only, <laughs> there is only 12 who can meet the qualifications. And then in addition to that, they will occupy 12 thrones. The Bible clearly says that those apostles will occupy 12 thrones. That's why Paul was selected. Paul was the 12th apostle. They there's nobody on the earth today that can meet those qualifications. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, uh, Thanks thank for that. Uh, let's let uh, let's let KD Kwame. You got a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate it both. You know, both viewpoints, and I um, and. I just did an extensive, you know, search on the whole prophet thing the other day. Well, from the last week, what have you? And this has been a question on my mind. This has been a question I've, I've had a conversation about this for a number of years. And so, but basically, um, I'll just the, the one key thing that 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 I heard between the both of you that was central is the word of God. Troy confirmed. He's like, you have to know the word of God. Yeah. You have to. Um, Gabriel, that was your whole point. <laughs> it's the word of God that that's that is that is God speaking. You know. So that that is that is the key central thing. And and there was a question that I came across. Now and there's an, there's one scripture, could you could you um Revelations 21? This is the new Jerusalem coming down, right? Coming down from heaven, I believe. I I just kind of skimmed through it real quick. It's talking about Jerusalem. But uh, verse 14 was, is, is what's sticking out to me. It says, the city wall had 12 foundations. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. The city wall had 12 foundations. And the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb were on the foundations. On the foundations. So if the city itself had the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, which were on the foundations, yet there, there are modern day apostles today. And I've come across a, a number of people who profess to be modern day apostles. Which apostles' names are going to be on these 12 foundations? Who are they referring to? It's my question. The apostles that you call the modern day apostles Stem from the twelve apostles of the Most High, just like when you accept the Messiah and no, 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 my, my, my question, my, my, my question, my question. question. Who are the this twelve? The twelve names. Who are these? That, 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 who are they? That, that's all I need to know. I'm trying to answer it. Just like when you accept the Messiah as your Lord and Savior, He comes into your heart. God lights the candlestick. Then the Holy Spirit comes upon you, right? And then it says in Ephesians, we all have um, the feet of the gospel in us. We all have the tidying of the gospel. So we all stem from the Messiah. So the 12 apostles and the Messiah was the number one apostle. So actually there was 13. He was the number one apostle. Actually there was 14 because Judas died. 
he, you know, committed suicide. And then there was another prophet, I mean, another apostle that took his place. So actually there was 14 apostles, okay? So we all, all the apostles that walk today, all the prophets that walk today, we stem from the inheritance and the characteristics of the called apostles and prophets that our God did from the very beginning, just like all of us stem from Christ, we accept him, then we stem from God and the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, okay, so can, can, I, can I respond to that real quick? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And then we're going to let Tommy Okay. Go. Yeah, okay, okay so that's, that's interesting to me because... I, I hear the stemming part, but then we will never call ourselves Christ, Jesus. We will never call ourselves God. You know, we just wouldn't do that. Um, and just to add one one little thing, the, the extensive search that I did, what I, re what I realized is anybody, an apostle in and of itself was just, for the common tongue, that can be a mailman. Uh, it was, that's, I mean, anybody who's delivering a message, let me finish, let me finish. Anybody delivering a message, anybody who's delivering a message is, is an apostle back during the biblical times. And also when it comes to prophets, anyone speaking out publicly was named a, a prophet. Now, the, the key thing is, the key thing is what Trey had mentioned in what, what he has, is just like what, um, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, um, Gabriel didn't take it all the way to verse 6 of 1 John chapter 4 because he was actually trying to, what, what the Apostle John was talking about was distinguishing between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's what he was really talking about. And so, because, and also, man, in the Old Testament, they didn't, even the regular person couldn't really tell who was a true prophet of the Lord. They couldn't tell. The only way they knew is it had to agree with the word of God about who God is, and and, and it, it had to, it had to basically the truth of who God is. So let's let's one last thing, and I'll stop right here. Right. Let's say they come out, and this is according to this is according to um, Moses in the wilderness. He said, if anybody comes to you and they give you a prophecy, right? They give you a prophecy, and they say, and everything is right, everything they say is right, but the intention is to lead you away from the Lord. That's a false, that's a false prophet. That's what's wrong. So you come in, you're in the wilderness. God's gonna bless you. He's gonna do all this for you. He's gonna, but you gotta go back to Egypt. Now they prophesied everything correctly, but they said, "Hey, you gotta go back to Egypt." Well, why would he do that? Now, right, uh, right, yeah, somebody put Ephesians so four. Let's, uh, yeah, so, let's let uh, Tony. Uh, Tony, you still, you still there? Yes, I am. Tony. Yep. Yes. No, no, not not. It was uh, with an I, Tony. Oh. Uh, she raised her hand. It, Oh, yeah, I raised my hand a long time ago. Y'all done had a whole nother debate. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. No dig. I was just saying that um, it was a lot. What was I trying? Oh, I was going to answer or try to answer Angie's question about um, like actually receiving a prophetic word versus um, your own relationship with God. Um, and the only part I actually had to add was that when God is speaking to you, and you're getting when you're getting a prophetic word or when somebody comes to you and say like hey the lord is saying this about you to me um a lot of it should be confirming because you do have that relationship with the lord and he should be speaking to you about that thing now some things however um are hard to hear just because of our own nature and our own tendencies to um just be rebellious and not hear god for ourselves hence prophets come or prophetic voices not even just um prophets but just people that hear the lord a lot clearer just because of how they're wired or how the lord just speaks to them the way they posture their life to hear god clearer than most people um and they're not of, of course as everybody's already said they're not going to say anything that's contradictory to the word of god but they will say things that direct you that give clarity that's part of it encouragement comfort and exhortation are the main points of prophetic words um but people that stand um in the prophetic office, they also have authority um, to deal with things um, like pulling up and pulling out. Mm -hmm. They also have to deal with dominic, um, demonic spirits and yeah. strongholds. They also have the ability to go into your past, your present, and your future and to bring alignment into that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot that deals with it. Also, um, I wouldn't want to serve a God that doesn't speak because then what makes him different from Buddha or Muhammad or anything like that? Like, um, like why do we need the Holy Spirit to sanctify us if he doesn't speak? And how is he sanctifying us in our day-to-day -day life um, with dealing with our 21st century proclivities 
if he's not speaking. Um, and then you can tell me that the Lord doesn't speak in your dreaming. How do you choose wives? How do you choose what school your kids are going to go to? Like he is speaking. You might not even realize that he's speaking to you. You might just shrug it off. It's like, oh, I had this thought. Or, oh, um, I keep seeing this. Or, oh, people keep bringing this up. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you in ways that are um, just in our everyday life. But that's right. just me. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, anybody want to respond to that? Comments? Because, uh, Oh, I, I definitely uh, agree with what she said. Uh, I stand behind her 100%. Uh, again, like she said, mentioned uh, in this life of sanctification, you know, the Holy Spirit has given us to lead us and guide us, right? How is the Holy Spirit doing that? How is the Holy Spirit doing? The Holy Spirit does speak to us regarding everyday decisions, regard, regarding report, important decisions about our lives, regard, regarding who to marry, as she brought up. Okay. Is this my wife or is this my wife? Is this my husband or is this my husband? Who? The Holy Spirit will give you clarity about those things. I I got a question. Well, it's it's, it's more so like a statement because it's when you sit back. My my question is this: Like, have you ever heard from God and was like wrong? Have I heard? Absolutely from God? not. I guess that's no. for Tony or, or Troy. No. No, no, he's a spirit of so, truth. People always. No, no, speak I'm saying, truth. but 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 if 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 that's true, right? Then why is that there are so many Christians that make the same mistake as people who don't because, have because like. There are so many, okay, the, oh, I, the Holy Spirit isn't the only spirit in the spirit realm that speaks, mm -hmm. right? Because the enemy speaks to us, right? He tempts us. He comes to bring um, destruction. He comes to destroy. And he comes to he comes to um, steal, right? He's not doing that in silence. But, but He's let, coming with let, us. let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Is God sovereign? Because the thing yes. about it is when God speaks, he speaks. And you will know but you that are, God. Okay, I, I yes, God is sovereign, question. but you have to, okay, go ahead. I can answer that question with the scripture. Go to uh, Ezekiel 13. <clears throat> if someone goes to Ezekiel 13, we see a passage where God is telling Ezekiel to rebuke the prophets of Israel. Let me just go there real quick. Uh, and I'll just read it for you guys. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. And he, he didn't realize he didn't pay attention. He didn't call them false prophets. He just said prophets. Prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, hear ye the word of the Lord, right? So that's how some people can get to say, claim that they're hearing from God or speaking a prophetic word uh, and get it wrong because they're speaking out of their own hearts, right? So that, my, 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 thing, my thing is this, right? If, it, if, <laughs> if it's a prophetic word, right, then it's God speaking then there's nothing changing that word because he's yeah. God. And yeah. so, that, and that, that's what I'm trying to say, because what you're saying is that, okay, if we get it wrong, it's not God's fault because God's never wrong. But what I'm trying to say is that God is all powerful, right? And that whatever he speaks, right, it will be correct. Because if a prophet in the Old Testament was false, they killed him. So, like, how do you deal with that? Like, because when people sit back and say, oh, yeah, God speaks to me or or this and that, and that, you know, we have to judge it by the word of God, well, then, like, how, why, why, and how do you have to judge it? Why can't the word of God just be the word of God? Why is it sufficient? And it goes back to what I said. Like, if, if you're saying that God still speaks today, then Christ's work on the cross is insufficient. No. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, no, it is. It's not. There's no, it's not. I absolutely there's nothing greater you. than your <laughs> salvation. That's that's no, that's not what we're saying it, at all. All right, then what are you saying? What are I, you saying? What is it? What is it that's more important than being made right with a holy God? Okay, again, like you're, like you're, you, you are you all right there, brother? Yeah, go <laughs> like ahead. I was saying, being like you said out of your own mouth, being made right. That's a process. Sanctification, that's a process, okay? It's not just mental assent. It's not just easy believism. This is a lifestyle of prayer, all right? When we pray, though, we can receive a prophetic word. We can receive a word of knowledge about what we're praying about. God can speak to us through his rainbow word, right? And in that, we get instruction on how to live in our daily lives, how to be sanctified, how to be more like Christ. That is the goal, is it not? Not just to be saved, 
but to be like him, right? We have a tool. The Holy Spirit is given to us for that reason, to be molded into his image as he is the image of the invisible God. Okay. That, that, yeah. All right, that, James, you had something? That is continuing the ministry of Jesus Christ. Not that, we, that our sins just be remitted, but that we be like him. That's the whole goal. James? Right. So are you keep mentioning the, the rhema word, and <clears throat> I just want to understand where you're coming from with that, because basically your premise is that if you hear the word spoken out loud or you hear um, someone echoing scripture, if you will, they're basically uh, telling you something to your spirit, if you want to use that term, okay. do something to your spirit that is supposed to coincide with what the scripture said, right? That that's because it because if it because if it doesn't coincide with what scripture says, then whatever they're saying can is void, right? I, I'll use an ex, I'll use an example. Okay, there's many people who are saying that uh, there's you, people who are in you know they, they'll claim they're but they're believers. I, I just agree, but there are people who who are in homosexual relationships, right? And they will say that uh, their homosexual relationship is righteous, right? And that the Spirit of God told them that it's okay, uh, that he's ordained them to be in their homosexual relationship. We, I don't know if you guys have heard that, but I, I've heard it quite often, especially in, amongst millennials. We know this to be false, because what does the Word of God say? The word of God teaches that he's put man and woman together in a union, in marriage. Not man and man. The Bible consistently condemns homosexuality. So we have to go to the word of God. We have to use the word of God uh, to balance out what is truth and what is false. Same with any word you receive. Also in prayer, right? I receive a prophetic word from a pastor, from, uh, although you guys don't believe it, uh, uh, apostle or prophet or prophetess, right? And out of the mouth of uh, two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I have to, it's my, the responsibility of me to go in my prayer closet and see if the, that prophetic word is true. If it was from the Holy Spirit, if it was from God, we, it's the, on the responsibility of the believer to test these things. And so, yes, we are just supposed to test it. And we will, and God will receive, uh, will give us confirmation, whether it, through, whether it be through the voice of the Holy Spirit or whether it be through a, a dream or a vision. I mean, I can test that my personally with my own marriage. I received, right. I mean, I received a dream and a vision about my wife. My wife knew I was her husband right. because the Holy Spirit told her. Right. All right let's uh, let's uh, let's my, let uh, Ruby, Ruby, you got something? Can I, you finish, this, say? Can I finish this statement real quick? All right, I, go ahead. Okay, and my my wife, he received. I'll to it if I can. All right, hold on. All right, all right, so wait. All right, Troy finish, and then uh, James respond, and then we'll let Ruby go. I just want to give some some application that this happens. My wife received a rainbow word in her prayer closet that I was her husband. Yet she did not pursue me because she received that word. Why? Right? right? Why? Because the man is supposed to pursue. Me, right? I had to receive a confirmation in my spirit that she was my wife, and I did through a dream and vision. And we're married today. I just want to bring that out there. I'm, I'm done. Okay, James, and then Ruby. Okay, so. I guess your your answer still kind of for me requires more questions. So it's kind of like for the sake of brevity, um, you know, I will I'll allow other people to talk because I mean, obviously we have we have we don't have a lot of time. We got thirty minutes left for those that are still interested. Right. So so I'll I'll, I'll reserve I reserve my response for like a, if we have like an after. Like, then I'll, I'll, I'll reserve my responses then. So, all right. So, so we're going we, right, to let Ruby go, and then we're going to let Tony go. Hi. So can anyone, can everyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So I feel like everybody is ignoring this scripture in Joel 2.28 that says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. In the Old Testament, we, we saw that the Lord gave us prophets to send warnings about uh, people's lives when they were about to, to die or 
when destruction was coming, I, why wouldn't that still be relevant today? He clearly says he we will have prophets in this day. Well, so I can, uh, why, I, why I can, would that I can not be relevant? That. So I Jesus said, that that, well. you know, Jesus said that he came not only to uh, fulfill the law, he didn't come to destroy the law, but he also came to fulfill the role of being a prophet. So there's three main offices of Christ, prophet, priest, and king. He fulfilled that role as prophet. And so that's the reason why uh, Hebrew says that God has spoken through the prophets, but in the latter days, he's spoken to Christ because he fulfilled that office. Uh, Tony? Hey. Oh, wait. Yeah, James. Yeah, so that particular text, Joel 2, 28, right? So um, it, 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 Hey, James, you're breaking up, man. Hey, now? Yeah. All right, so so that Joel 2.28 passage, okay, where the prophet transitions to describe events in the distant future uh, from his vantage point, verse 28, like you said, and it shall come to pass after the flesh. Or what does he mean and has this been fulfilled? That's the question. So a, a New Testament reference to this verse helps, under, helps us understand that that's in Acts 2. This is the initial a descriptive understanding of the church's beginning at Pentecost. Peter is preaching, right? He's preaching on the day of Pentecost. And what was happening, you know the story, you might know the story well when, you know, the Holy Spirit put upon uh, around 120 uh, people at the time, those, and, and, and they started speaking in, 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 a, in a foreign language that many people that were from those foreign countries uh, could understand, all right, and he was explaining based on Joel 2.28, look, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, right, since it's only the third hour of the day, it was in the morning time. Um, Peter connects Joel's prophecy with the Holy Spirit's coming in the commencement of the church, uh, but not every detail of Joel's prophecy is yet fulfilled. We understand, we, we do understand that, but the pouring out of the Spirit began on the day of Pentecost from that time, and the Holy Spirit and dwells all those who come to faith in Christ. However, uh, th this event, it marked, right? It marked the difference in the Spirit's role from Old Testament times. So the Spirit had previously only empowered certain individuals uh, only for a particular period of time. But on the day of Pentecost, it was, it was 120 followers of Christ in the upper room that received this. Now, one of the surprising outcomes of this prophecy was that non-Jews were also filled with the Spirit, right? Um, now, as far as our church age, as the foundation has been laid, uh, where we have the 12 apostles that wrote the scriptures, that, are, that, are, that completed the scripture and the message of, of God to the world uh, for the church age, okay, what we have is sufficient. Because if we want other, if, if, if we grab onto other people that consider themselves prophets and consider them of God, the first question we have to ask ourselves is why aren't they in scripture? The second, the second thing we have to confirm is it is what they're telling me, is what they're telling me. Why isn't why isn't this in scripture? Why isn't what they're telling me in scripture? The the, the thing is we understand who we are and what we're going, what what we're what we're doing as believers. The, the last thing we want to have is a maybe word. We want a sure word, which is what we've been promised in the text of scripture, that the scriptures themselves are the sure word. So these, supplement, these supplemental people, and, and, and just want to also point out, because there is confusion with this text too. Last is the last thing I'll say about it. In the future, the Holy, the Holy Spirit will play an active role in, in, es in eschaton, in, in the end time events. And he's going to bring about the uh, bring about uh, the the remainder of that verse and what's going to happen. Um, but the official fulfillment of this prophecy has already begun uh, by the church age. And we, if we follow Scripture closely, we'll see that. All right, let's uh, let's let um, who was it? Uh, Ruby go. Well, Tony, were you going to let Ruby go before you before you say yeah, something? Yeah, for sure. All right, go ahead, Ruby. Rosalind too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I wanted to clarify that the verse that I was reading from 
it speaks about the latter days. It's it's it wasn't just specifically for that time because later on it says that um that the sun shall be turned to darkness and and we know we haven't right. seen any of these wonders happening. So it speaks to the latter days, not just what's happening now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's un that's understood. Um, but yeah, again, we have a I think we have a lot that's been unsaid. Uh from both the negative and affirmative position. So, and for the sake of breath, if anyone has any other comments, we can. Uh, who else Who else you said could go before you, Tony? I think Rosalind. Rosalind. Uh, yeah, Miss Rosalind, you can go. Okay. Well, is, she, is she there? Or is she, you might be muted. All right, well, Tony. Uh, um, so there was one, there was a question that- um, Hi, are you calling Rosalind? I had muted my phone, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, go. Oh, no, what I, what I wanted to say was, um, the only way that human beings are on this earth is through a woman's womb. So why would not God use a woman in any other position in the kingdom except a bishop? Because in the book of Timothy, it says a bishop cannot be a drunkard and he can only have one wife. So that tells us that that's the only position that God reserved for a man. Anywhere else in the Bible, it does not say that a woman cannot be an apostle, prophet, pastor, minister, deaconess, or evangelist. There's no scripture that exists that denies us of the right of being in position in the kingdom, but being a bishop. So any woman walking in the bishop's position is an ara, because it says a bishop can only have one wife. So a woman cannot have a wife. God, nobody could get in this earth, but through a woman's womb. So what makes you think that God will put us at the end of the tag pole when we're the only way for you to get in this earth? So of course he gonna Anybody rise. Anybody want to respond to that? Oh, uh, scripture. Well, well, the, the Apostle Paul respected women. That's true. He worked alongside them for uh, the furtherance of the gospel, and he appointed, but he appointed no female elders or pastors. And then his. But how do you know that? How right, do you hold know on. That? Let him. Let him respond. Okay. I don't know what. I said, how do you know that he did not appoint women? Because we all know. I oh, mean, I said he did not. I, I said he did not appoint female elders. Or pastors, right? That's what I'm saying. In the book of Zechariah, it tells us, I think it's Zechariah, don't quote me, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says, if you take out of this Bible, I will take out of your life. If you add in this Bible, I will add in your life. So many scriptures have been taken out. The Bible literally has been flipped upside down by the devil himself. We all know this. So there's a lot of things in, Wait, in but the, the scriptures the can't be broken. Right, so right. If the scriptures can't be broken, then they, they can't be broken. Let me finish. Okay. There are a lot of scriptures missing from the Bible that has been proved over and over again. So you can't say that he did not appoint Based on what evidence? the elder or as the Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, all right. So first of all, um, going back to what I said, like the, the message of being a sinner, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being a savior mm -hmm. and saved by grace through faith. Like that's the message of the gospel, right? right? And only okay. God can preserve that. That's so true. I, I mean, you have the question and, and ask yourself: Have you been deceived, or are you going to to um, follow these uh, deceptions? Like, if well, you, this right, is what I can say. No, no, no. If, if you're a Christian, right? Uh -huh. Then do you genuinely believe that? Do you believe that God is powerful enough to preserve His word? Yes, but you got to understand this. So why would, why, why would, you why would God put in the Bible said. if you take out of this word, I will take out of your life. If you add to but this not, word, is that in proper like, context, though? Why didn't that this was going to happen? Why is else that, is, that, is, that is that in proper word? context? Huh? Is that in proper context? You talking about the uh, passage in Revelation? No, it's in the Bible. God said, if you take out of this word, I will take out of your life. If you add to this Based word, on what? Based, Based on what? Warning us that this was going to happen. He was warning us through his own word, telling us that they were going to take things out and add things in. And it's been proven by so many Theolians. And by, by who? By Theolians? I, 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 I like I to respond. Been, it's been proven by God himself. I like okay. to respond. So right. Right. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, oh, hey, like hey, um,
Uh, who? Tony. Tony. Uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, first thing I wanted to ask is this. Okay. No, matter of fact, I'll ask that at the end. That's what I'm going to ask. Okay. My question. I'm going to leave my question to the end. But Troy's question, right? Um, when he was doing his debate, he said, um, how can we know truth if scripture is all we need? Right? Um, I think Gay, when he when you answered that, um, you said you said, you know, like um, um you know, obviously it's us knowing Christ, right? If we know Christ, when we when we follow Christ, we are um um in essence. We have everything we need, right? He is sufficient for everything. And not only that, Jesus said in his, in his, his own words, he said, um, 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 you know, I think I, I have it right here. It says, um, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth, right? Paul related, I think it was in Acts, I believe, when they had questions about something that the preacher was saying or whatever, um, um, whoever was preaching, um, I think the Bereans were giving us an example to show us how we are to go back to the word and check for ourselves, right? So, so if Jesus put the standard, right, we're following Christ, and Jesus put the standard as the word being truth, right? Why would we, or not, not, not me, but y'all, right, um, put, put, um, like like y'all are like almost like creating like a whole nother like standard right outside of what jesus said right um um so i think that's really important to think about like y'all are like you know um um like you know instead of saying you know sanctify them in the truth you know um y'all are saying you know well jesus said sanctify them in the truth your word is truth y'all are saying um sanctify them i will sanctify us um, in, you know, uh, by your, by, by your, you know, ever ending spoken word that you say to, you know, different people, you know, in different times individually, you see what I'm saying? Y'all are adding to that, you know, like literally, literally it says your word is truth. Like that's what it says. Um, I mean, I mean like, and who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. There's nothing else we need. Right. And, and I would, I want to say this too. I've been where y'all been. Right, what? believing believing all all of this stuff outside of outside of scripture, right? But I think it's I think it's necessary to bring this up. I think it is it's, it's very necessary to bring this up. Jesus said, "Beware of false prophets." Right. So how can you tell between a false prophet and a true prophet? Right. Let's uh let's let uh Ruby uh she raised her hand. Oh, oh okay. I can respond no, to that no, as well. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so I think what Apostle Rosalind was trying to convey is that there's a lot of things that get lost in translation, which is why we need the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, to reveal all things like his word says. And additionally, there are Bible translations out there that are completely false. Um, for example, I don't like the Message Bible. Um, I've heard some things about the Passion Translation they are completely based on the opinions of the writers and not the full translation. So I, I think that's what she was trying to convey. But, but can I say something? Uh, I mean, go ahead, go ahead, Tony. Okay, Tony, I got to say something afterwards. I've, I've been All right, then, then we're going to let Troy. Oh, you can go ahead, Troy. Okay, yeah, uh, I would just like to uh, go back on what Rosalind Solomon was saying. Uh, if you go to Luke 17, 34, King James Version, right? I don't know if you guys have heard about the Mandela effect, but it's true. It's in the King James Version. This was never in here, but it's been changed, right? We're not saying that the word is not sufficient. In its original context, in its original form, it cannot be broken. But in print, yes, it can. And look at Luke 17 and 34, uh, the King James Bible. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Now, what 
I don't know if you guys studied the Bible, but when I was a little boy, when I studied this, two men was not in there. Thank now, all of a sudden, you. it's in there. Yeah. Uh, the, verse 35, Luke 17 and 35. Two yeah. women shall be grinding together. The mm. one shall be taken and the other left. I remember that two women shall be grinding at the mill. Now, yeah. that's one. This is endorsing, someone can read this and say, this is endorsing homosexuality. This is why we need the spirit of truth to lead us in guidance of all truth and give us revelation and illumination of what the scriptures are speaking. This is right, what she's James, saying. You, you said you, you had something you wanted to say, uh, James. All right, this, you know, I don't know how we're going to come to an end point. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it's I, I think it's, I think it's, um, I like obvious, the, you know, we just going to have to agree to disagree, right? You know? Well, I mean, all of these questions have answers, but all of these assertions sometimes really don't require a response. However, uh, I will say that when it comes to translating scripture, if you're going to, if you, if you, if you study any paleontology or understanding how scriptures, the scriptures were recorded, as well as passed on, as well as copied, as well as translated, if, you, if you've done any kind of any kind of extensive research on it, you understand that anytime there is a, uh, a translation, it is literally that just that. It's not a transmission. It's a translation. There's, two, there's a difference between a transmission of scripture and translation of scripture. Translation means that you go back to the original text. You go back to the original language. And out of the wealth of the almost 8,000 8, transcript uh, manuscripts that we have, if you go back to the original language and you translate from the original language to uh, the English language, if you're if you're writing English, or it, or it could be uh, whatever language that you're translating from, but you're not you're not changing the text. You are translating the text to a new language. So there might be words that in the English language don't have a direct correspondent in Greek or in Hebrew or in Aramaic. Because certain parts of scripture are written in Aramaic, right? Now, when we say scriptures can't be broken, it's not just the fact that uh, it's all, it, the one thing is authentic because it's God's word. We're going to always bank on that because of what he said about himself and what he said about the scriptures. But also, there is, we don't want to dismiss the scriptures for what they are. It, it is the most unique, comprehensive literature of all time. There is, there is no grammatical mistakes. There is, there is, it is, it is absolutely unique in that right. Three, three different continents, three different languages, 1500 years, 40 different authors who mostly didn't know each other, who have the exact same message that coincides within that, that matter of time. No other literature has that testimony, just in uniqueness alone. So when we're talking about the scripture, we're not just talking about a place that you go to, to confirm what you're thinking. It's the mind of Christ in which we come under submission to regardless of what we're thinking ahead of time. And we, we the, our thoughts, our mindsets, our, 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 our whole context is, is vetted and understood and, and originated by what the scripture says. So if there's something that it doesn't say specifically, it's not for us to question scripture. It's for us to depend on the author of scripture to, to guide us. But we're not get, being guided outside of scripture. We're being guided to understand the scriptures. So I'm going to say it's, it's 9, 10. I got yeah. to get to the after party and we're going to talk yeah. some more. Yeah, we got uh we got nine minutes left, and just I uh, want to be respectful of people's time. You know, we got people hopping off, so it's uh just nine minutes. Um, you know, if not, we can go ahead and wrap this thing on up. You know, but uh Troy, I just want to say uh thank you for your time, man. Thank you, you know, for debating. Um, fighting to defend the gospel, gospel, yeah. Fighting to defend the gospel, yeah, yeah. Fighting to defend the Bible, yeah.